morning. So what most people think yoga is are the asanas, the postures. Because if you've ever gone to a yoga class, that's what you do, the asanas, the postures. But in reality, in fact, the, asana is, the asanas are only one-eighth of the eight limbs of yoga. And one of the other parts are called pranayama, which is the breath, which is a very big part of yoga. So that's what we're going to talk about today, is breath. And I have a quote from a teacher of mine, Gary Krapsow. The asanas are less about mastering the form, but rather about understanding the body. Feeling through the body a deeper connection, a deeper understanding of their body, and then adapting the posture in order to affect positive change. So it's not about the asanas, the form. What is he talking about? What is he saying that actually helps us have that feeling, that deeper connection to our bodies? And that's the breath. If you think about it, breath is really awesome. So here you have the body and the nervous system. And the nervous system touches every part of the body. And the breath is either controlled by the nervous system or the nervous system is controlled by the breath. And so the breath connects to every part of the body. It just, you know, it just kind of uh, follows that fact. And if you think about it, breath is so important to our bodies, just like an analogy is like our bodies are machines. They're just machines, just like a car is. And this is an old car, not the new electric cars. That if you have good airflow in a, in a, in a car, you have good engine. If you have an engine works well. If you have poor engine flow, you have you may have trouble with your engine. If you have no airflow, you have no engine function. And our bodies are like that too. Think about it. After three minutes, we're brain dead. And after seven minutes, we are dead. No breath. And even sometimes, uh, it can happen that some parts of the bodies don't get oxygen, like in scleroderma. Um, it's where the um, extremities don't get oxygen. And you'll see black fingers because there's no oxygen. So oxygen is really important to our bodies. And since we're just machines, we are just, our bodies are just machines, just like any machine, if you want it to function properly, you should know how it works. Oops, wrong thing. <laughs> so this morning we're gonna talk about the biomechanics of breathing. The most simplest explanation is the diaphragm retracts up, it retracts down, air is pulled in, you get inhalation. The diaphragm retracts back up, the air is pushed out, you have exhalation. That's the most simplest explanation. The next e deeper explanation, and this is not, by far not the deepest explanation you can go with breathing, because breathing is really pretty, um, very big. So you have this diaphragm that's up in your rib cage like this, and it contracts and pulls down. The rib cage muscles contract and open, and air is pulled in by a vacuum. How many people think about breathing? during the day. I mean, you always stop and think, I am breathing. <laughs> Seriously. You know, sometimes, sometimes you do. People who have uh, CPD, things like that, they actually have to think about breathing. But normally, it's on automatic. We don't think about it. And thank goodness, because we wouldn't get anything done, because we think about breathing all day long. It's true. So we are blessed to have an autonomic nervous system that breathes for us. So you can take it out of autonomic, and you can put it into manual. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to put our breathing system into manual. Oops, yes, that's what I want. So I want you to sit, push your chair back and sit at the end of your chairs. And the reason why I have this slide is because not many people, maybe most people, but not very, a lot of people, have an interoception of what is in their bodies and how, they're sit, how they sit up. So the slide on the right is our pelvic bone, uh, skeletal system. And the little two loops at the bottom are called sit bones. And if you've ever had somebody sit on your lap, those are the bones that you feel someone pushing into you. I want you to find those bones and sit up nice and tall. So feet on the floor, sit to the end of your chair, and see if you can kind of rock back and forth and find those bones and balance on them. See if you can find a balance. And you'll notice when you do that that your spine is now sitting on top of the sacrum in a balanced position, and your spine actually just kind of lifts up into it's a neutral position where the curves are in their spots. That helps you sit up nice and tall because we usually sit like this. And when we're trying to breathe, 
it's very hard for the diaphragm to fully contract and the lungs to expand, and it also puts a lot of extra pressure on your heart and lungs, which is not healthy. So good posture is very important about breathing, too. So everybody's sitting up nice and tall, in their nice positions, roll your shoulder back, open your chest, hands on lap, and I'm going to invite you to close your eyes, and if you're not a person that likes to close your eyes, move everything from in front of you and close your eyes just enough to see the, the white of the desk because I'm going, we're going to do some visualization. And with your eyes are open, your eyes are telling you something, and it, the visualization can't come in. So closing your eyes and bringing a, a visualization of a beautiful, a picture choice of a beautiful flower, but it has a lot of pollen sitting on top of it. So if you take a big breath through your nose, you're going to get pollen up your nose. So when you take this breath, don't go yet. When you take this breath, it's going to be a little gentle inhale through your nose just to get the fragrance and enough to expand the chest, but that's about it. A small, as you saw, a small, gentle breath we're going to take in the first slide set. And then we're going to hold it for a second, pause, because the diaphragm does come to a stop before it starts to retract back up. And then you're going to imagine, because it is, your lungs are little balloons and your whole, uh, nose is a little hole in the balloon, and you're going to let the air out go really, really, really slowly, deflate really slowly, and then we're going to come to a stop at the bottom of the exhale. So take, breathe in, and breathe out, exhale, and now take that very gentle inhale just enough and feel your chest expand and stop. Hold it for a second. Feel the expansion of the chest. And now slowly, slowly, slowly let the exhale out. Let it seep out really slowly. And at the bottom of the exhale, hold it. It's called suspension. Don't breathe in, don't breathe out. And now let go and breathe in again. And feel like that suction happening, that vacuum inhaling, expanding the chest. Hold it for a second. Hold it and feel as if you are doing a little bit of a back bend. You might feel like your chest is sticking out and your shoulders are coming backwards. Your spine is elongated. And now exhale slowly, slowly, slowly out once more. And hold the exhale. Let's hold the exhale for one, two, three. And now let go and don't breathe, but just let go of the exhale. And notice you are breathed. The diaphragm automatically starts to retract down and the lungs expand without you even really working on it. Stop and let the exhale happen. And then after this exhale, just let your body breathe in and breathe out and watch it. Don't try to control it, which is really hard after we put it on manual. It's hard to let go back to automatic. But see if you can let it go. And feel the body inhaling, lifting. Feel the body relaxing. And notice how hopefully your body feels a little more relaxed, the mind more calm. So go ahead and open your eyes. Thank you for letting me, uh, allowing me to give you that experience. So, okay, I'll have to check the time. Let's get your eyes closed. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, as you notice, as you inhale, there's a little bit, for those who do yoga, there's a back bend that happens naturally. And as you exhale, there's a little bit of a forward bend. So imagine, even using it in daily functional, in daily function, inhale, reaching for something. Exhale, coming down. Inhale coming back up, using this breath to facilitate movement, because you could even feel it, even though we were all standing, sitting very still, there was a lot of movement happening in your torso, of up and down, in and out, open and shut. So what Gary was saying, what Gary was saying was that you have this form, you have this posture, you, you were sitting, sitting is an asana, it's a posture, it's a form, but yet there was movement happening. And within that movement, within sitting in that form and having that movement happen, you can you go deep inside and you start to understand yourself and get to know yourself, maybe physically, maybe more emotionally. But it allows you to make a choice when you feel the when you feel there's a there's a change happening and make and make a positive change. Thank you.